This is my Winnebago Revel. And this is its cassette toilet. And this is a soak system. Well, that's just the empty box. The extra stuff is over there. Let me show you. With the soak system, I can convert the cassette toilet into one that works without any chemicals. And I will show you all those components as I install them. But in essence, there's a little fan that will be sitting inside the door and it creates a negative pressure inside the tank and it sucks out all those odors and, well, gets them outside of the van via this filter here. And the Revel uses a Tetford C22 cassette toilet. It is behind this door. Well, it would be, I just took it out. Um, and so the first thing I need to do is drill a hole into the door to put this little fan in. This is the outside filter housing and there's plenty of space on the inside here in the Revel between the back of the door and the cassette toilet. So placement isn't that critical. I can really put it anywhere here on the outside. And I just need to figure out if I want to center it between these two sides or if I rather center it between these little bump outs and, and this side, and I think that might look a little bit better. And then I will drill the hole right here, and then I can still move it around and, and make it parallel with those sides. But I, I will be drilling this hole first. So I'm going to drill a little pilot hole first. The Zog system is a German invention, so all the measurements are metric and they call for a hole um, that is between 36 and 37 millimeters. And I don't have a 36 or 37 millimeter hole cutter, I just have this one, which is an inch and a half or 38 millimeters, but it, it will work fine. I will just need to caulk around it a, li a little bit and that should do it. So and I'm going to finish it from the other side now. Wow. And this is how the door looks on the inside. It's basically styrofoam sandwiched between two pieces of plastic. The little fan is supposed to go into the hole and then pointing towards the hinge side of the door. So there will be a plastic tube running over here and obviously that should be on the hinge side. So I'm putting it in like this. Before I put in the fan, I want to put some caulking on, on the styrofoam on the inside here. Before I put the fan in, I'm going to put some electrical tape. Wow, this is difficult with the gloves. I, I put some electrical tape on the inside. Well, I guess this would be the outside of the fan. So this is just temporary and it should avoid that I'm scooping up any of the, of the caulking now when I put it in and hopefully once it's in there I can just pull this out. Let's see how that goes. And of course I put a bead of caulking around here on the inside as well. Mm. 
Okay, now I can screw it in if I find my pre-drilled screw holes. There's one. I'm using the scrap wood as a spacer. I think this is a good position. It doesn't really matter that much because the door is not exactly symmetrical with, with those little bump outs for, for the locks. So it doesn't really matter if I move it over here more or over here. And with this one, at least I get it parallel to the door frame, like so. And of course I'm putting some caulking on the back side of this one as well. This little fan of the soak system doesn't run all the time. It will come on whenever the toilet is open. So when somebody on the inside opens that little lever, then this micro switch will turn the fan on as long as the toilet on the inside is opened. And it will create that negative pressure inside of the tank and it will suck all those unpleasant odors out of the tank. And that's why it's actually called the Zog system. And I know I keep saying Zog system. If you watch other English speaking YouTube videos, they might pronounce it Sog system, but I can assure you it's pronounced Zog system. So Sog is the German word for draft, which is exactly what this little fan produces, like this negative pressure inside of the tank. This draft it creates, this is where the name comes from, Zog system. This next step is a little bit tricky because it happens inside of the cassette toilet compartment. It is very hard to film and it is probably even harder to work on while filming. Essentially, this little flat aluminum bar with the micro switch attached needs to be mounted up here onto two existing screw locations. So I have to take them out and then put the bar in with, well, the same screw. So actually one screw needs to be replaced and one will be the same. So let me try to film on the inside here. Now the fan needs to wire into power and because the toilet itself runs on 12 volts of power, there should be a connection somewhere close. In the Revel, it's this cable here that is tucked into the side. So let me just pull this out. So we have a yellow and a white wire and Winnebago color coded it in a way that the yellow is always plus 12 volts and the white one is ground and then on the other side of this plug the red one connects to this yellow one and is 12 volts and the black one is ground. The Zog kit comes with two of these quick connect cable splices. Let me show you how to use them properly. There are for sure several ways to connect wires correctly but these quick connects are not one of them. I want to replace this entire plug with the slightly 
smaller version. It's also for four wires. And while doing that, I will then crimp the new cable, go into the fan, into the existing ones on, on this side of the plug. The Zog system I'm installing here, it is not Revel specific, it is toilet specific. And Zog makes these systems for a variety of cassette toilets from both Domatic and Tedford. And they come in this door vent version, but they also make roof vent or floor vent versions. And in theory, you can order directly from the Zog web shop in Germany. But there's no distributor here in the US, so, so shipping and, and all of this might be a little bit tricky. I can help you if you like. If you find me in the Winnebago Revel forum, link to that in the video description. Find me there and I, I will help you out and I'm, I'm sure we can arrange something and you can get a Zog system for your van. Before I crimp the plus and minus onto the, the, the new connector, I splice in the additional cable. So they will be crimped into the same connector. Before I put the actual plug back on, well, not this one. Before putting it all back together, I really want to reroute those cables. Right now, the way it comes from Winnebago, these cables go around here and then into this little slot but i think it would look a lot nicer and cleaner if i just drilled a hole into here into the back side of this and then feed the cables through that hole so there's nothing running around here so let me do that real quick half inch rubber grommet And then I can feed all those cables through. So now that all the cables are coming in through this hole here, which you cannot really see, I can install the plug. And obviously I need to make sure I align the colors correctly. So this red one needs to go to the yellow one, which is up here. And then the black one goes right next to it. Here. And then the gray and the purple one, they are not really used for anything. So I think they're for um, kind of a relay function for the toilet. Whenever the button is pressed, those two will be um, connected. So this is for I think triggering an external pump or something, but they are not in use, so it doesn't really matter how I put them in. So, and with this in place, I can connect this and then tuck it all in here. like so. And this other side of the cable now goes to the motor, to the fan, I should say. I want to test it real quick. So when the toilet opens, the switch turns on and that turns on the fan. So I'm not sure if you can hear that. It is for sure running. And now that I have a switch that turns the fan on and off, I can use the same switch to turn on an LED. So this I will wire in in parallel with the fan and mount it somewhere on the inside. So it gives me a nice visual indication of whether the toilet is opened or closed. Now the cassette itself needs to be modified. This pressure relief valve needs to be replaced with this green plug that is supplied by Zog. Okay. 
And then a hole needs to be drilled into the cap. And this is where the plastic hose will attach, which will then vent the tank to the outside. This needs to be a 35 millimeter hole, which is the same as one and three eighths. And this drops this entire inner section. This is, whoops, this was the measuring cup for, for the chemicals. But really with the soak system, we no longer need chemicals, so we no longer need the measuring cup. In the kit, soak supplies this rubber grommet that goes into this hole somehow. And then this, this bushing goes into the hole and into the grommet, like so. And this is now where the hose attaches to, like so. And they also supply, let me take the hose out for a second, this plug, which also seals off this hole. So the idea is if you have to empty the, the cassette toilet, obviously you have to remove the hose, but to still keep it sealed, then you just put in the plug, go to the dump station, dump the whole thing, remove the plug, put the hose back in. And now the hose can be cut to, to length. So it just reaches the fan. So I'm going to cut it here. I think it might be easier if I take this one off again and then just kind of screw it on. And that is pretty much it. I tidied up the cables and added a little magnet so now I can store the plug down there in the cassette toilet area. And I also added this LED here which will turn on whenever the cassette toilet is opened and the fan is running. And I thought it would be appropriate to use a yellow LED. As always, thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.